You ready? Yeah. All right. How's it going today, guys? Let's see. Hi. Let's see Ungodly Geeks. Hooray. Hold your applause. We don't need it. I'm Joe. I'm Luke. And today we are talking about stuff, as we sometimes do. Um, yeah. We're going to start with some news that's stupid, because of course we are. Um, there was a black Texas teen told to cut his dreadlocks so he could walk at graduation, um, which, uh, you know, is stupid for multiple reasons, because, you know, racism and all that. Um, but he was suspended and told he can't walk in his high school graduation ceremony unless he cuts his dreadlocks to meet the school district's dress code. Why are dreadlocks banned under your dress code? Uh, white people. White people, but white people have white dreadlocks too. White people dreadlocks too. are nasty. Well, well yeah. Yeah, but okay. white people dreadlocks are nasty. So, I mean, when I first saw that story, I didn't see the, uh, the like, anything else. Uh, and I was like, well, that's shitty. And they should just let the kid walk. But I've been around people with nasty dreadlocks. Well, I mean, so sure. I, I kind sure. of at the same time get why they might ban them. <laughs> because fucking hippies exist. <laughs> right, no, I, and I'm on board with, with that particular aspect of this, um, except that particular aspect... It should be aspect, a hygiene issue. Well, that particular aspect, though, has absolutely nothing to do with this, right? Because yeah. um, it's not him being dirty, it's not him being a dirty hippie, it's not him being a dirty white person, it's, it's him being from Trinidad, and that literally being a part of their culture. Yeah, well, that's yeah. the difference. They, that's yeah. why... Uh, no tolerance policies tend to be shitty. I mean, zero tolerance policies are extremely stupid. Like, yeah, Depending I don't know on a case by case basis, but just like, I mean, no, 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 they're they're extremely stupid, right? Um, like the bullying zero tolerance policy. Kids can't even stand up for themselves anymore, uh, for fear of getting suspended or expelled from school, because you know if someone's bullying you and they they punch you and you punch them back. Well, now you're both in the same amount of trouble, despite the fact that you were just defending yourself, which would be protected under legal precedence, and the bully was being a complete dickhole, right? So, like, now you're both suspended. You're both at the same level of suspension, too. So it's like, you know, this is is even really – this is just as stupid because – he can't wear his dreads because it's against dress code, but it's also a cultural thing which should be protected. I don't know. Well, my question is, how long has he had the dreads, and then they've just now? I mean, did they just recently suspend him? Did they? Um, like, I'm looking at like this. I'm not excusing the school, but like, if they just now were like, oh, by the way, you haven't been following dress code for four years. Yeah, no, uh, um, and you're not going to be able to walk. I mean, that 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 he changes it more. Like that, honestly, he could probably pursue that legally and have um, even. Yeah, no, that that's basically what I think what's going to happen here. Um, DeAndre Arnold, who is the name of the child in question, whose father is from Trinidad, said he's worn dreadlocks for years, like a lot of men in his family, and always followed the school dress code by tying them up. He really likes yeah. that part of the culture, so he's embraced it, right? Um, yeah. his mother, Sandy Arnold said after Christmas break, three months before graduation, the Barbers Hill independent school district changes dress code as it refers to hair. Now the rules stipulate the hair must be clean and well-groomed and not extend on male students at any time below the eyebrows, the earlobes, or the top of a t-shirt collar, including when let down. I mean, where the fuck do you get off controlling, like, it's not... It's like hair is not hurting. Okay, so I have anybody. a. I get I get the clean, completely clean, groomed, all that. Fine. Right, right, yeah, but like, whatever. But none of that other shit should be in their prerogative. Right, like, why does it matter that they can extend down a certain length, and why does like if he's taking care of his dreads, which I'm assuming he would be, because they they are a high maintenance thing. It's like yeah. Why? Why would this be a problem? You know, like yeah, what? Not dirty hippie dreads, and it, like you said, it just they changed it in December. Yeah. So even on top of that, he should be like, "Hey, so no, <clears throat> I've 
done fucking four years at the school or however long, even if he's been there since the beginning of the school year. Like, I shouldn't have to fucking cut – he shouldn't have to cut his hair and ruin what he's, you know, been growing for years. All right. Um, in a statement, Barbara Hill's independent school district did not immediately return a request for interview on Wednesday. Um, of course. In a statement posted on a Twitter account, the district said that it does allow dreadlocks. However, we do have a community-supported hair length policy and have had for decades, the statement said. BH is a state leader with high expectations in all areas. Okay. I still don't see what that really has to do with clean, well-maintained cultural dreadlocks. Yeah, now they're just being shitty about it. Yeah, no, they, they totally are. They're being complete dicks about it. It's like, come on, dudes. I don't know. It's, it's just, it's frustrating as hell, man, because that's dumb. <clears throat> um, I don't know. Uh, it, it's just, like, you're sitting here, and you're, you're just using, you're hiding behind bureaucracy to, I don't know. It feels like you're hiding behind bureaucracy to be, um, be racist. Be a racist asshole. I don't know. Uh, uh, that or whoever came up with it, <clears throat> fine. You came up with this policy. You're now running into a problem with it. You need to go back and rethink, rethink the policy. It. Rethink it, especially when it's something that's like it's so small and ridiculous. You know, like that's how I that's how I feel about it. It's just it's. <sighs> We will continue to be a child-centered district that seeks to maximize the potential of every child. Local control is sacred to this country, and we will not be bullied or intimidated by outside influences. So, so we can bully and intimidate the people who are in our local yeah, government. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. how local governments work. Yep. So they're right now, guys, they're bullying a, a kid who wears dreadlocks because it's a part of his culture and he has pride in that. And they, they want to continue doing that. So they're not going to be bullied by our outside influences. <laughs> they're not going to be bullied by outside. God, I fucking hate the hypocrisy of these <laughs> self-righteous asshole fucking cunts. I mean, the guy, the, the, Just this is, this is the superintendent. This is the superintendent statement. Um, uh, I want to shit on this one kid, so fuck you. Yeah. Poole said the district's board of trustees, which has included African-American representation, takes a role of representing the local community as one of their chief priorities. And their local community is all white people. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You've had black... I have black friends, is literally what that statement says to me. Yeah, that is the political equivalent of <laughs> I have black friends. <laughs> So I can't be racist. That is so dumb. <clears throat> so, God, just let the fucking kid have his hair. Just let the fucking yeah. kid walk for graduation. What is wrong God, with you? Shitty. Because he has hair that... Because he has hair? Because I'm willing to bet this Greg Fool guy doesn't have hair, and that's why it's a problem. He's always wanted that curly hair. God damn, dude. <laughs> this, is, this is one of those things that just pisses me off. Like, why is this a problem? It's one of those silly, stupid fucking things, those arbitrary fucking rules someone comes up with and then is fucking diehard going to enforce every single aspect of it just because they think if they even budge for a millisecond, the fucking commies are going to come in and take over the goddamn country. Yeah. It know. is this insanity, this fucking – and it's all tied into like religious – and just fucking, oh, I, it's 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 really fucking frustrating. You see this shit all the time, and it typically comes from like the Bible Belt, the religious side mm -hmm. of like, well, mm -hmm. no, if we have to, we have our 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 standards, and everyone has to come in, uh, 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 follow them. But then you know they look over at a different country, like in the Middle East, and go, well, look how horrible it is that they make everyone follow their laws. Yeah. Fuck you. Yep. Hypocritical assholes. Yep. All right. So moving out of that story into another story. Um, Something fucking less stupid, hopefully. Oh, no. It's just <laughs> as stupid. Uh, God damn it. 
Bank calls cops on a black man trying to cash a check from a discrimination lawsuit. A Detroit man is suing a Michigan bank for accusing the cash a settlement check awarded to him in a racial discrimination lawsuit, according to a report. Santori Thomas, 44, claims TCF bank employees refused to cash a check or deposit a settlement check on Tuesday at a branch in Livonia, leading cops to respond on a fraud investigation to be launched, Detroit Free Press reports. <laughs> Holy fuck. Yeah. So this dude... This poor bastard. He this... got his fucking payday. He got his fucking payday and is like, I'm going to my bank and getting this money. <laughs> Which is well within his right, you know. 100%. Yeah, uh, fucking do it, bro. Get your God. fucking money. Nope, 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 nope. Um, they will find any way to stop you. I didn't deserve treatment like that when I knew the check was not fraudulent, Thomas told the newspaper. I'm a United States veteran. I have an honorable discharge from the Air Force. They discriminate against me because I'm black. None of this would have happened if I were white. And you know what? I agree with him. I, I 100% yeah, do. Yeah, probably true. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. If he's had a bank account there that's never had more than like 500 bucks in it and he walked in with this – what's probably a massive check. Yeah. I could see a bank being like, okay – we're going to put this – it's going to have like a fucking 10-day hold or whatever right, because, right, right. frankly, you're a broke motherfucker and you've never had this much money. Right. I'd expect that from my own bank if I walked in with a, like a hundred grand check or something like yeah, that. Yeah, no, like if I sent a – However, if I, if I sent like a deposit a, – if I sent a deposit yeah. or like took a – or like deposited a check via like the mobile app for like Ally Bank that was like – yeah, like you said, 300 grand or some shit like that, some absurd number. I expect that they would go, huh, we're going to have to make yeah, sure they're this They're probably is... going to go, no. Yeah. We're going to need you to uh, deposit this some other way. <laughs> right. <laughs> like taking a picture. <laughs> or you're going to need a 40-day hold or some shit. Well, okay, I'm going way off the bounds because the amount you, the most you can deposit via that is like 50 grand. But still... <laughs> Like, I, I figured, I, I figured they probably have limits for the yeah. mobile deposit. But like, if I'm sitting there and I'm doing a deposit like that, like, yeah, I would expect, I would expect that because I think the most I've ever had in my account was like three grand, right? But not an immediate criminal investigation, right? That yeah, is fucking insane. Like this, this is this is literally stupid. Um, Thomas, who had an account at the bank for nearly two years, sued TC had Bank a on fucking life. account. He's had a, he has history with the bank, um, yeah. alleging racial discrimination by the bank for calling police, prompting four cops to respond to the branch. What the fuck did they think he was gonna do? Stab them with the fucking check? I mean, maybe, maybe they're maybe they're really, really adverse to paper cuts, and he thought that that's what they thought was gonna happen. I don't know. Like this is this is retarded, uh, literally retarded. You are holding society back right now. Um, the vet even called his employment law attorney while at the bank for help, explained to bank employees that the check was authentic. So he calls his yeah. lawyer, the guy who got him the settlement check. I got on the phone with the bank, attorney Deborah, attorney Deborah Gordon turned the news, told the newspaper. I sent them my federal court complaint to see that it matched. I did everything. Thomas. Yeah. I, and she, she is also once again saying Thomas was denied due to his race. Yeah. No, I fucking totally believe this. I mean, don't get me wrong. I think he could turn that into payday number two. Which is awesome for him. I, but you know what? I hope he gets it. I hope he gets it. Yeah. I, I fucking hope he gets it. Um, what kills me, equivalent of this in our job was is like when we get fake $100 bills. Right. I have people, I've had people come in with fake money. When people come in with fake money, we don't immediately like go call the police and try and hold these people or anything like that. Absolutely I laugh not. in their face and tell them I can't take the money. Uh, I, yeah, I, I'll look at I'll look at a bill. I'll get a fake bill. I'll look at oh guys, um, I think you guys got like I, I'll tell them like I think you got you know scammed yeah, because yeah, this is fake. Them. Yeah, no, I, I tell them hey you got scammed. This is fake. I can't take I, it. I had this dude who's just uh, I mean he, he was I'm not gonna say he was a crackhead, but he had the the symptoms of a crackhead, mm -hmm. and he was trying to give a fake one hundred dollar bill to one of my cashiers, and I walked out there and I was like oh man. Whoever gave this to you, they got you, bro. And he's like, no, man, I just got that. They told me that they, they, kept, they paid me. I was like, dude, I don't know what to tell you, but you better get back with them people because they got you. Because it was, oh, it was bad. It's fake, fake. But oh, man. We, I don't, I, I, even when we're dealing with um, 
mo- like money orders and check cashing and stuff that they do at our at our place of business, we don't. I don't. Th- is there any time we immediately call the police? I don't think so. No, I've never no. seen that on any of the stuff that I've done. And um, I mean, we have people money laundering and the only all time, kinds of crap. The only time that we, I think, we've ever come close to that is when we've had like repeat offenders who have come in repeatedly trying to cash checks. We know our fate. Yeah. Um, yeah, I could get that because then you could set some shit up. And again, right, yeah. repeated fake checks. Repeated. They're trying to cash. Not the first time they come in. Um, so there was a statement from TCF Bank. We apologize for the experience Mr. Thomas had at our banking center. Uh, CF Bank spokesman Tom Winterberg told the Post in a statement, Local police should not have been involved. No shit. We strongly condemn racism and discrimination of any kind. We take extra precautions involving large deposits and requests for cash. And on the, here, here. Yeah. In this case, we were unable to validate the checks presented by Mr. Thomas and regret we cannot meet his needs. Thomas, who is suing for unspecified damage, was not arrested or charged during Tuesday fitness visits to TCF Bank, where its computer system read his check as fraudulent, according to police. But the check cleared some 12 hours later after Thomas opened a new account at a Chase Bank in Detroit. Mm-hmm. So, so, TCF Bank, it- your computer said it was fake, but Chase Bank was like a much bigger bank who would have even better fraud protection in place, said it was legit. Yeah. And a brand new account at a bank he's never banked with before. It's like, yeah, no problem, dude. We got you. That's what kills me. Brand new account that they, and I get, (laughs) that's just weird. I get all the security in the world for big checks. Like I said, if, you know, if I took in a check like that tomorrow, I know they're going to be looking at me strange too. And I'm, Mm -hmm. you know, I'm I'm all right with that. But in no time, unless that motherfucker is jumping over the counter, like screaming, "You're gonna take my fucking check!" Would you be calling the fucking police? What the fuck is a street cop gonna come and do and be like, "Oh yes, I see. This is a fake check. I can see the fucking pixels here." No, the street cops are gonna be looking at the teller like, "What the fuck are you bothering me for?" Right. Yeah. This is this is like a fucking federal investigation type thing. You don't. We don't deal with this. I feel very intimidated because I knew that if I would have gotten loud, they would have had me on the ground for disturbance of the peace, Thomas said. Mm -hmm. But I didn't get loud. I did nothing. And, like, that's a shame. That's a complete fucking shame. Like It pisses me off. The dude did nothing wrong. Yeah, he was just trying to get his fucking money that he was rightfully owed. And it's like, no, you can't have that. Mm -mm. Fucking hell. It makes me mad because this guy sounds like and who knows, we weren't there, but I'm going to go off of what's in the report. He's trying to cash his check. He's keeping calm, wanting to get his money in that. We deal with people all the time that you tell them no on returning like something that's $25. They throw a fucking fit, yeah. throwing shit, screaming, cussing, yep. Yep. making – and then we have to call the police and kick <clears> them out. <throat> they deserve to have the police called on them. Yeah, Those people are being shitty human beings. This dude's just trying to get his fucking money. Yeah, I mean, he sat there. I get it. Their system said it can't do it, but at that point, they should have been like, you know, we're really sorry. The computer system has flagged it as, you know, yada yada. Here, call this number. Here's what we're going to do. Yeah. This is what we have to do. Yeah. I see, understand like, that. See, like when we get someone trying to pay with a check, that teller check declines for whatever reason. Yeah. I'll try again. If it declines the second time, it's like, all right, I don't know what's going on. But I can't take your check as payment, unfortunately. Uh, Telecheck says no. Here's a number that you can call to find out what's going on. And then, you know, and that's for like $100 worth of shit, you know? Like, come on, man. Yeah. I just, I don't know. crazy. All right. Let's move on. Um, The CEO of a Wall Street bank that took a $25 billion bailout warns of socialism for everyone else. (laughs) God. Like when it comes to Wall Street bank bailouts, bank executives seem to have no problem with socialism. How about for education, healthcare, and infrastructure? You know, the things that the working classes care about. That kind of socialism, according to one of the world's most prominent Wall Street CEOs, is very bad. Socialism has yeah. failed where it's been tried and ultimately leads to an eroding society, J.P. Morgan Chase CEO James, Jamie Dunn said, in a, said Wednesday. Um, I, I don't know, like, I'm pretty sure we have uh, countries where socialism has succeeded, maybe? Finland, Sweden, um, a lot of the... uh, Basically all of the Nordic countries. countries. 
I mean, granted, they do form of a socialist government. Yeah, like like granted, they are they obviously uh, do is have Holland much... as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, like half I mean, of the you know, European these Union. countries that their quality of life is through the fucking yeah. roof in the top 10 in the world and we're like somewhere in the mid 50s or something yeah like their quality of life is is through the fucking roof um like their health is is amazing everybody's healthy everybody's having a good time no we can't have that because then the status quo will be upset um oh God, it's insane it's with, it's fucking it's, i don't i don't the the absolute just insanity of that one the wealthiest people telling poor people you can't have you don't want this you can't have this you don't you don't want to have most of your needs taken care of you don't you don't want that no 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 the middle class you don't want that you, uh, you don't want to have taxes raised a little bit yes because of poor people yes and then the yes, fact that do. those people are going yeah no we can't have no no i don't I, that's, this would be horrible <laughs> No, it's it's insane. It's insanity. Yeah. Um, with but, Democratic Socialist Senator Bernie Sanders among the leaders in the Democratic presidential race and other candidates espousing similar sounding ideas, the head of the nation's biggest bank by assets said the idea of socialist control of the means of production would be detrimental to the U.S. I honestly don't think they understand. Detrimental to his that. fucking owning another goddamn continent. Right. Yeah, basically that's what it is. Uh, he said the socialist Shit. governments traditionally have done a poor job allocating capital and end up backing politically popular endeavors and bridge to nowhere projects. Once again, I will still point to the incredible quality of life that people in socialist countries in Europe have. Um, and the one, fact that the whole bridge to nowhere concept came because we funded a fucking bridge to nowhere. That was us. We did that. that. Was not someone that was socialist. Our that was our we capitalist society. Um, we built the fucking bridge to nowhere, literally. Once you do that, you will have an eroding society, he said. They do need to fix inner city schools, infrastructure, health care. We can fix all of that in a capitalist society. So why haven't we done it yet? I'm, why it's only it been a problem worse? for 60 fucking years. It's, it's only been declining for the past century. Why haven't we fixed it yet? Oh, God. I come on. Do we remember when J.P. Morgan Chase was fined thirteen billion dollars for mortgage fraud to help spur the two thousand eight financial crisis? Then we do we then remember when his bank got a twenty five billion dollar taxpayer funded bailout later that year after causing the crisis? Um, was it? Uh, like, come uh, on. What the quote was? If it was, if it was Iceland, where when they had their bank crisis instead of bailing the banks out they uh dragged the bankers from their homes and burnt the banks down and, and now they're them. doing great yeah they're doing amazing <laughs> uh do we I remember, remember what country it was yeah i i know it's one of those countries though you're right remember when his bank raked in a record 3.7 billion dollars in profits thanks to 2018 trump's 2018 tax cut do you remember when J.P. Morgan Chase used those savings to buy back $55 billion in stocks instead of boosting workers' pay? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep, but he's going to tell us, uh, no, we do, you shouldn't You shouldn't have free health care. It'd be bad for you. No. No, it fucking wouldn't. <laughs> no, like, no free school. Why would we want free school to get more doctors to help support free health care? It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't <laughs> make any sense whatsoever. It'd be horrible. Trust me. That does not make sense. I own a fucking, I own an island. I, I know things. <laughs> I own all of your assets. I know, it's fine. My daddy did not hand me five billion dollars <laughs> so that you could get free health care. All right. We're going to end uh, our news of the stupid on something significantly more funny. Um, this is something we meant to talk about last week, and uh, we never got around to it because we had a lot to cover. Um, but there's a deaf man who is suing Pornhub for lack of closed captioning in videos. <laughs> I'm sorry, I could I couldn't finish that without giggling. Um, Pornhub superhero series may have been popular in 2019, but one man isn't buying into the hype and instead suing the adult site for not providing closed captioning on their videos. Pornhub, which hosts millions of adult videos, offers all kinds of upgrades to enhance the video watching experience. 
There's video streaming and crisp HD play quality, playlists, full screen modes, download options, and a ton of other features for the person looking for a good time. However, the site is making it harder for the deaf community to enjoy. Oh, man. Yaroslav Sir is assumed the Pornhub video sharing website, claiming it's denied the deaf and hearing impaired access to its videos that others can easily enjoy. According to court documents, it says a lack of closed captioning violates their rights under the Americans with Disabilities Act. I This is hilarious to me, and I absolutely love it, and I'm not dissing this guy at all. I, I want that to be clear. I just find this absolutely hilarious uh, because it just came out of nowhere. I just... I don't know. I... I want I want Pornhub's response to be like like a legitimate like we apologize, you know, we should have been doing this and then to like make this montage of um subtitles that are just grunts and o oh and like moans, moans. and fuck me fuck me fuck me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> just a fucking montage video. There you go. There's your goddamn subtitle. <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. I love um, it. Well, I maybe... love that he's legitimately like, oh, it's a part of this act. They have to give me subtitles. Well, uh, many are probably wondering why you would really need closed captioning for pornography. Very good point. We just made that. There are more than a few porn fans who do like to watch the movies for the plot and rich storylines. Those need to be in quotes. Those words need to be in quotes. Um, Ford River Disney Channel star Bella Thorne recently directed a movie for Pornhub, which has received praise. She even won an award for it. Um, also mentioned in the court documents are videos that Yaroslav Suris wanted to watch. Oh my god. Dear hot, Christ. Hot step aunt babysits disobedient nephew. Sexy <laughs> cop gets... <laughs> Sexy cop gets witness to talk. And Daddy 4K, Allison comes to talk about money to her boy's naughty father, are all videos Cyrus wanted to watch, but couldn't understand the plot because there was no closed captioning service. <laughs> oh my god, Cyrus says that he and many in the deaf community will shell out extra dough for a Pornhub premium account, but it's pointless without being able to understand what's happening in the movies. Alright, so I'm going to break down what's happening in the movies, and just, just based on these titles. All right, hot stamp aunt babies his disobedient nephew. She fucks him because he's being an asshole, or he fucks her because he's being disobedient. It doesn't matter. They're fucking. <laughs> it's like I just, oh my god, I'm I'm on board with him though. I really am. Um, <laughs> it's just, it's just, I don't know how to, I don't know how to, I don't know how to respond to this. I mean, you know, I feel for him. They 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 need them subtitles so that he can get into the plot. Yaroslav Sir is assuming Pornhub for an undisclosed amount of money and wants them to add closed captioning. As of this writing, the popular side has not responded to the court case publicly. Regardless, this could be a landmark case for the deaf and hearing impaired as they try to enjoy their original Bella Thorne directed Pornhub film and other adult material like anybody else. Maybe other sites like YouPorn and X Hamster will follow suit and start adding closed captioning for all of their adult videos, though it seems unlikely. Hey, X Hamster getting some love. I <sighs> love they were brought up in there. I just I just uh like I I'm I'm, I'm so I'm so confused. Um like I really really am. Um because like what the question I have for this fellow what are they, what what should they do about the amateur videos they get uploaded that are like filmed on a 480p camera with a microphone from 1982 that you can't hear <laughs> shit clearly on? Like, what are they gonna do about that when they can't? Like, are they just gonna add like closed captioning not available? We don't know what the fuck they're saying. Uh, I I don't know what like what what do you do oh, with God, that you know kind what of they stuff? Do? You know? They get a shitty um, bot algorithm voice to text and they oh. just fucking let it go wild you know no you know what they yeah that's that's exactly what they and do they go, have some of the craziest stupid fucking subtitles they go to google and they say hey you know that uh, technology you use to put automatic captions and translations on porn on youtube can we license that from you and use it on pornhub <laughs> it's like for this deaf fellow here and all of his deaf and hard of hearing friends who want to know what's going on in these porn movies we have <laughs> 
Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me if they did something like that. I wouldn't even go to YouTube though. That's too good. No, no, I think they go and have somebody make a shitty one. <laughs> they just they hire like like that's the thing. Like Pornhub has done a lot of uh, of really cool shit in the past with uh, various yeah. things like you know giving back to women's causes and donating tons of money to charity. They have a scholarship program. They have all sorts of of shit where they give back. Um, to people and it's amazing so like i could seriously see them going and like doing doing this legitimately not not taking the route you're saying but like like actually sit down with experts in those fields of natural language processing and real-time transcription algorithms and shit and like legitimately spend like two or three billion dollars and do it right like because that's just the kind of that's the kind of company that they legitimately strike me as yeah i mean and they could but i i just want shitty shitty subtitles <laughs> i want to see terrible subtitles on porn i mean i'm, I'm with you um, like i want to see a, mo- a video montage release well like you said it's just a bunch of oh uh, oh uh, oh uh, that uh. would be so good <laughs> Oh that yeah! Oh be, yeah! Uh, fuck me! Fuck or me! Or they me. spend a bill. They spend a billion dollars to develop this, um, like like audio text, uh, speech to text that like can describe the moans and how, <laughs> <laughs> like what kind of moans and grunts are happening. Like, like <laughs> if they did that, I would have that on all the time. <laughs> like that just would be so all the time. <laughs> right. I mean, it, why, why stop there? Why not make porn for the blind? Just yeah, audio porn. I mean, that's already a thing. But yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's it's uh, fucking. You just play uh, the videos, ASMR. and it, it doesn't matter. Like, just play the videos; it doesn't matter. Yeah, uh, no, but I mean, add in like descriptions of what's happening uh, more than oh, yeah, somebody fuck me, somebody narrating it. <laughs> yes, narrating. <laughs> Oh, that's that. That would be fucking hilarious. I watched the trailer for the film uh, by Bella Thorne. It's called Her and Him. Yeah. Uh, I don't, I watched the trailer and I can hear and I have no fucking idea what the hell's going on. So I don't think he's missing much. Yeah. Um, Apparently I won an award, though. So I don't know. It's just weird. No, yeah, yeah, I did mention that. Uh, that was there. Um, I don't know. Maybe I'll check it out. Cause I didn't know she had done anything. Uh, but yeah, you know, that's, 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 great that's the news of the stupid that made me laugh. Uh, I, I really, my heart goes out to this dude. I really hope he gets what he's wanting. <laughs> Despite the fact that I'm laughing at this, uh, I'm not laughing. I at hope he him. doesn't get a fucking dime though. Yeah. He doesn't no. deserve any money for that. If he he's asking money. for money. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he is. Right, I he's was asking, say, if he's asking for money, fuck him. Yeah, he's, he's asking. That's, that's him trying to get a buck. He's uh he's he's uh suing for an undisclosed amount, which uh, maybe just maybe yeah. he's going the route that uh, Taylor Swift took that one time she sued somebody for something, and she literally sued them for a dollar for a um, dollar, not because she was she she wasn't wanting anything from them except for them to stop being a dickhole. So it could be maybe he's doing it that way, maybe like a dollar plus court cost. Like just put the fucking closed captioning on there, please. Um, so maybe that's the route he's taking. That's what I'm hoping to, because yeah. I agree he doesn't deserve money. He doesn't deserve compensation for not being able to watch free porn. Um, <clears throat> because it yeah. very clearly says he's not paying for a Pornhub premium, but that he would. But it's pointless because he can't enjoy it. So, oh, God. yeah. Um, so I'm very much on that same level. I'm, I'm with you on that. Like, you don't get to I would get then... money for that. As far as because this is my this is where my brain goes. As far as the legal case, then because he's he's bringing up their discrimination, yada yada. Um, they're not following those rules. Do they have any legal requirement to put subtitles on the free videos? I I mean I don't think so. Um, I don't I think mean, so either. I don't. I yeah like 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 it, I, like Pornhub is just not posting those. Pornhub is not a regulated business, right? It's not like TV where no. they're required to put subtitles or captions on things. Like, yeah. I, I don't think he has any legal precedent. If that were the case, um, somebody would have sued YouTube by now. We would have heard about that for the same thing because they don't have closed captioning on the billions of videos they have uploaded, right? Like, most of them yeah, don't have – It's a volunteer thing. Yeah. It's, you do it yourself. Like, we – I have the option – 
like if I wanted to sit down and we wanted to start writing scripts for these rather uh-huh. than going off the top of our dome like we do, I have the option to add closed captioning to the videos. I won't fucking do that because I'm sorry for any anybody who, who I don't know how a deaf person would listen to a podcast, but like, <laughs> you know, like, like, I'm sorry, I'm not going to be doing that. That is, yeah. I mean, no. And it's not something that is required of me because we're not broadcasting on like our local Fox affiliate or we're not broadcasting on any sort of cable channels. We're a yeah. couple of idiots who get together every week record some shit into a microphone and throw it up on the internet. So I'm not adding. Yeah, that's, why, that's when I question. Okay. So hopefully then he is trying to sue them because I, I don't see why a lawyer would take that case. If there's no possibility of winning a case, like winning something, unless it is legitimately, no, we're just doing this for the principal. Yeah. I don't, I don't get it. <laughs> Yeah, uh, especially because either. he doesn't have uh, a premium. If it was the the lawsuit was over premium, then I could almost then see okay, there's some standing. But I mean, you could sue anybody for fucking anything now. So yeah, or in this country anyway. Yeah, so who knows? No, I mean we're I we're know. we're a very sue happy country. So yeah. Um. God, I <laughs> still remember that was like the thing in the nineties. Is it like, oh, everybody just sues everybody for everything. Ah. And yeah. it never really went away. Yep. Stereotypical American thing. Oh, yeah. All right. <laughs> so that's all for News is Stupid. Um, so let's move on to some other topics. Um, yep. I know you, you mentioned this. The Obi-Wan Kenobi Disney Plus series is reportedly on hold. Yeah, that's fucking Im- immensely disappoints me because this is one of those things that I'm like, as soon as Disney Plus got announced... And that this was happening, I was like, yes, give me an Obi-Wan anything. <laughs> I like Obi-Wan. I like Hugh McGregor. I want I want these stories that are tangently connected to the main story of Star Wars, but they can do something different with. Uh, and then this one now has been put on hold. They haven't said used words like indefinite or anything like that, but apparently they are looking for uh, to or it is indefinitely. Yeah, um, it is they're indefinitely. looking to replace the script. Yeah, uh, Kathleen Kennedy is not happy with the scripts, so um, they want to rework yeah. a lot of that. Um, I mean, and I'm kind of down with that. Like waiting for the right stories should be like getting the right stories, getting them, getting them correct. Um, I'm kind of on board with, right? I am. I am definitely on board with. <laughs> If you know something's wrong, um, getting it getting it right, right? Like we've talked about that with games. Better off. Yeah, we've um, talked about that with games delaying. and movies, right? Like yeah, like when when we were talking about horror movies, we said small, simple works the best. Don't just stop yeah. trying to make these big, huge budget horror films. No. Yeah, this, however, it, it there's there's a very uh, negative pattern with Lucasfilm and Star Wars ever since uh, Disney purchased Lucasfilm and put their people in the head of it. Uh, this is becoming a very bad pattern that it seems like uh, they, when they start these projects, they either they're not doing enough to figure out what they want mm. and what they want to get out of it. And then few months a year later after the project's being worked on they're coming back and going oh no this is we, we can't deal with this no cancel it and we'll restart the whole thing right that's what right. they did with uh um g solo it's why rogue one was so un uh, solo and rogue one were so unbelievably expensive um mm-hmm. it's why we ended up having jj abrams direct the third uh <clears throat> star wars main movie of this series it's uh, it's kind of a leadership problem it seems like it, it's is it's starting to uh uh correlate you know what i mean mm-hmm. yeah like it's like, very like, similar with like dc more, and warner brothers yeah like the more we see it happening like the, the more it it comes out maybe not necessarily comes out but the more it seems and starts feeling like uh corporations just meddling yeah you know like like i agree yeah. with you yeah um, 
So that's kind of sucks, you know, like, like I, I was down for it too. Cause yeah, give me like, like, okay. Episode eight upset me. It, it's, I still believe it's the worst Star Wars movie ever. One of the worst sci-fi movies I've ever seen. It feels more like a B or C level sci-fi flick than a Star Wars flick. Um, but like, and it did turn me off to Star Wars for a little bit, but then, mm-hmm. you know, but then you sit there and you look like there's so much good shit to Star Wars and, you know, I, I sat there, I watched The Mandalorian, I'm like, you know what, I'll give it a shot, I got Disney+, Plus, seven bucks a month, why not? Mandalorian was amazing, it brought me back into the Star Wars fold, you know, like, I love it, and, of course, baby fucking Yoda, like, fucking doesn't love baby Yoda. Um, people who are monsters, that's who. So, yeah, you know, it, it's, it is disappointing, it's very, very disappointing that, that this is what's, this is what's happening, so... So, um, apparently there were only two scripts written, uh, and the story in this was obviously supposed to start filming now, uh, Ewan McGregor claims that it's been pushed to film in 2021 mm. and that it's not as big of a deal as the internet's made it out to be. Right. Um, but the two scripts were written, the story became an issue and then the, everything was jettisoned. Um, and now they're on the hunt for a new writer to write the series, which again, when you go through, have a set script done, you're going and you start filming or at least pre-production. Yeah. And then you go, no, 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 never mind. That's, that's a problem. Yeah. That's pretty fucking extreme. At least in this case, they didn't let half the movie get, or half the TV show get filmed. Yeah. I mean, that, that's good. Um, at least. So they have to scrap all that shit and start over. Like it's nothing like that. Um, yeah. Something said that, uh, uh, like the way you McGregor put it's, is that um, now that episode uh, nine came out, uh, everyone at Lucasfilm has got more time to spend on the writing. They felt they wanted more time to write the episodes. Yeah. So he makes it sound like that. Um, there's apparently been some comparisons with that. They decided the script was too close to the Mandalorian. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, don't get me wrong. I, 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 I wouldn't, I don't fault them if that's the case where they realized Yes, that's a major hit, but oh fuck, uh, we should probably do something at least a little different. <laughs> right. Yeah. So. Oh. Eh. Yeah, no, uh, that's cool. Do you hear that Tommy Chong is uh, writing a Jijin song, Chong horror flick? No, I didn't. I had heard uh, something about them not that long ago. They were working on a new Jijin song, but I didn't know it was going to be a horror movie. Yeah, um... It's called Color Out of Space. He's not actually a big fan of horror, but then realized uh, that he's got this project kicking around and saying, I've been wanting to write, I've been, I've been trying to write a Cheech and Chong horror movie. Um, it's like, huh, <laughs> that's so goofy. Um, he's quoted as saying, every comedy team before they broke up, they always had a horror movie. Abbott can sell a Halloween. Abbott can sell a Meet the Monster. Bing Crosby and Bob Holt, they had one. Everybody has a horror movie. So I always wanted to do a horror movie. In fact, we did a reunion tour movie and I wanted to make that a horror movie, but it didn't have the clout that I once had with Cheech, so I couldn't talk him into it. It's a nice genre to play with. You can have a lot of fun with it. Like Get Out, I like that approach to it. So it's like, you know, but... Okay. <laughs> I'm I'm definitely not against this, but the movies he quoted, while they have horror elements, like, elements in them, they're not horror movies. They're Evan not. Evan Costello Meet Frankenstein was one of my favorite comedies as a kid growing up. I had a VHS of it and wore that motherfucker out. That is not a horror movie. I know. <laughs> I know, I know, but oh, it's, it's 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 cheat. Come on, dude, it's Chong. He's high as fuck it's, all the time. Don't get me wrong. I am one hundred percent down. It's I love that he mentions those movies. All of those were fucking amazing comedies. <laughs> and then he's like, like Get Out. I want it to be like that, which is a straight up fucking psychological horror movie. <laughs> By the way, the movie uh, apparently is being made and hits theaters this weekend. Um, has, it also stars Nicolas Cage, so it's like it's got Tommy, it, it's got Tommy Chong, it's got Cheech Marin, and it has Nicolas fucking Cage. We gotta go see this flick, man. <laughs> Wait, it's done? It's out? Yes, apparently. This weekend? Uh, let me let me double check this because I'm reading this on uh, Movie Web. Uh, Color Out of Space. 
Uh, let me search Google because that'll give me movie times. Uh, yes, it is not in a theater that we would normally go see. It is actually an Esquire theater tonight at 9 o'clock. <laughs> What's the name of it? It's called Color Out of Space. It is a 2020 horror film directed by Richard Stanley based on the short story The Color Out of Space by H.P. Lovecraft. <laughs> oh, okay. So it's not a Cheech and Chong horror movie. No, no. Um, I think that's oh, been... Okay. I think that's been... Uh, oh, that part's been overblown. Um, <clears throat> actually, uh... No, this is different from this the Cheech and Chong movie. Yeah, this is a different movie from the Cheech and Chong horror movie. Never mind. Oh, okay. Um, it's my bad, guys. Got that confused. Got that mixed up a bit. I was going to say, it's out of, holy shit, he's fast. <laughs> but, uh, no, he's not. It's fucking, it's fucking Tommy Chong. He has a, he has a Reddit account called So High I Forgot My Password because he forgot the password to his other Reddit account. So, you know. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, it's a 2020 horror film. Just It's, it's out this weekend. It stars Nick Cage, Joe Lee Rad- Richardson, Madeline Arthur, Karanka Kl- Klitscher, and Tommy Chong. So. Oh, he stars in this. Okay. Yeah. He's not. Okay, he didn't write this one. But he does he want write, to write. He is He is apparently writing one. Um, okay. He is writing a Cheech and Chong horror movie, which he doesn't think it'll ever get made. Um, but... You never know; they might be able to do it. Yeah, I mean, hey, I, I you know what? Uh, actually, speaking of this kind of movie, um, Jay and Silent Bob reboot is out on uh, streaming today. Oh, sweet! And, uh, Don't even have to watch that. Don't yeah, I'm we'll probably be that. talking about that next week. I was going to watch it, and then I forgot, and now mm-hmm. I remember. But um, um, yeah, I mean, it, that got made. Tommy Chong, if he like, he could get uh, people behind him for that. Mm-hmm. It's just Guaranteed. whether or not, it, like the thing is, it's just whether or not he could get uh, Cheech on board. That, yeah, that's that, 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 like that right now is the big uh, thing. It, it's like I don't know if I could. If, he straight up says he doesn't know if he has the clout that he could he could uh, get Cheech in there. Like that that wasn't the quote Cheech. I read earlier. Um, I would wonder if he re- Cheech Marin retired. I don't know what he's. Um, apparently, they are selling glassware for marijuana enthusiasts under the officially licensed title of Cheech and Chong Glass. So. Yeah. Um, and they they did get together in as recently as 2013 to release uh, Cheech and Chong's animated movie. So. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Um, but I could. I, this is a movie where if it doesn't get picked up um, by like a big studio or even like a small studio, I could see it popping up on Netflix and being like a cult hit or something. Oh, I could easily see. He puts this out there. He put that out there seriously. He's probably going to get some calls from people like, Hey, uh, we want to do something. Oh, I, I, he's uh, Chichi Baron's still totally acting. I forgot the Nash bridges fucking movie that's coming out on television. Isn't is, is still happening, which is still blows my fucking mind. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, he's, he's still, he's still, he's still doing stuff. I mean, that could be uh, that could in, be amazing. This, this this could be like amazing though. Like I I want to see older. Well, uh, old older. Yeah, it's already old. Uh, I, I want to see old. I want to see old Cheech, Cheech and Chong just doing silly shit, like running from yeah. running from like a Freddy Krueger ripoff or something like that. Like that that would be oh, amazing. Man, we haven't that that screams like. Um, like going back to those scary movie vibes, if they can do a fucking co- horror comedy parody type movie, mm-hmm. oh, that would be so great. Think, yeah, like, like I don't know, like for awesome. me, for me, it, it comes to mind like um, I don't know, sit there and have like a scary movie, but with Cheech and Chong instead, maybe tone down the extreme stupidity and goofiness that that scary movie went for and just yeah or or even better even better um make it a legit horror film but those guys are so high they don't realize it's le- they're like legitimately in danger yeah like could you imagine uh like like them getting lucky that they're not getting their heads chopped off because they're bending down to pick up a spliff or something <laughs> i got i am 
I can like that. That's actually – that's kind of what I was thinking. That's kind of the way the um, uh, old uh, – the movies he mentioned were done. Yeah. Um, uh, Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein, Dracula, and the Wolfman. Uh, they the whole time the Wolfman's trying to kill them, and <laughs> and they're running away. Or maybe it wasn't Abbott Ab- Ab- and Costello. No, it was Abbott and Costello. Yeah, but in a way, I mean, that that would be yeah. I'm fucking down for that uh, in any in any fashion he wants to make it. Although going f- like full on horror, I don't know if I'd want to see that so much. Just because I don't know. I I, I don't think we need a full horror. No, no, no. I mean, like, see Cheech and Chong murdered or some shit, but... Um, I, I like I like the uh, consensus of this uh, out, Color Out of Space. Um, a welcome uh, return for Richard Stanley. Color Out of Space mixes tart B-movie pulp with visually alluring Lovecrafting horror and a dash of gonzo Nicolas Cage. <laughs> so... I mean, yeah. give Nicolas Cage the fucking ability to do whatever he wants and you're already doing something right because mm-hmm. I mean uh, he's gonna he's gonna make for a delightfully insane movie yeah I've mean, just... watched the, the trailer's trippy as fuck it's definitely uh, uh, Lovecraftian I mean it says straight up that it's a Lovecraft inspired story mm-hmm. oh yeah, yeah. It's a, an yeah. adapted Lovecraft story yeah, it, it's based on the short story The Color Out of Space so yeah yeah so, I mean, that, that sounds cool, and it's got, you know, fucking Nicolas Cage and Tommy Chong in it, so let's go watch it. <laughs> let's do it. And Tommy Chong looks like a medicine man. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, he does. That's, that's awesome. Um, I, there was a movie I wanted to see from Nick Cage recently. Um, Andy or something like that. I think it came out like two years ago. Mm-hmm. It's a revenge movie. Uh, man, yeah, it was Mandy. Yeah, he, like I think his girlfriend gets kidnapped and like by these, this like cult, and he's just goes to t- fucking rescue her, and it's like this splatter gore horror horror esque revenge movie. Uh, it's supposed to be pretty good. I need, it, I actually, I'm gonna add that to my. Oh, that that sounds uh, interesting. <laughs> and, and again, Nick Cage at his Nick Cageiest type of movie, so. At um, least it, there's going to be that entertainment value out of it. You know, one thing I didn't know, I just, I literally just learned just now. Um, he did the voice for Spider Man Noir and Spider Man Into the Spider Verse. You didn't know that? Nope, didn't know that. No, that's why. I watched they, that movie that's why three he was, fucking that's why times. I said, uh, that's one of my favorite versions of the Spider Man in there because he's so great. I've watched that movie three fucking times now. And I, I did, I did. It never clicked for me, and I guess I never watched the credits. <laughs> mm-hmm. So yeah, he also did the Superman. He also did Superman's voice in Teen Titans Go to the movies. So. Yeah, uh, as an homage to the failed Superman movie where he was going to be uh, Superman. Mm-hmm. Oh, um, he also did a movie recently called A Score to Settle. An ex-enforcer for a local crime syndicate has vowed to enact retribution on his mob bosses after 19 years of wrongful imprisonment. The only thing diverting his violent plans is a newfound relationship to his beloved son. Interesting. I can rent it for 99 cents HD on Amazon. Yeah. yeah. Do it. Do it. Probably will. I'm what, was the, watch. what was the name of that movie? Mandy. Mandy. When a nightmarish cult attack Red and Mandy, the shocking assault leads to a spiraling, surreal, bloody rampage of all-out mind-altering uh, altering vengeance. <laughs> okay, yeah, all right. Let's the, do it. Uh, short description. I say we just, uh, I say we pick a bunch of Nick Cage movies we've never seen before, watch them, and then review them for an episode. No, that's not a bad idea, and actually yeah. have a like structured episode again. <laughs> yeah, no, not us just sitting here bullshit and looking at things on the internet and then talking about. What them. stories did you see this week? I don't know. Let me look. <laughs> I don't know uh, something about a uh, uh, something about a burrito and and Taylor Swift getting hit in the face with it. I don't know. It's some dumb. Yeah. Uh, this furry dragged a guy out of a car and beat the shit out of him. I don't know. Is that a thing? Can we talk about that? <laughs> uh, what what a group of furries uh, broke up a pedophilia ring. That sounds um, 
that that sounds oddly hypocritical, but <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Pedophilia. Man. They didn't say a puppy, Emil. <laughs> that's true. That's true. You're right. I'm sorry. <laughs> I just I don't know, man. I it's just so, it's all weird. All right. Thank, thank um, the internet. Are, are we done? Is there anything else you want to talk about before we uh, sign off here? Uh, I, there's the the J.J. Abrams bad robot uh, is apparently going to be working on the dark. Uh, uh, what is it? The Dark Avengers, not Dark Avengers. Dark Justice, Justice League. League. Dark. Yeah. 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 Uh, for Warner Brothers, they picked up. I don't know. I don't think they. I, I guess they made a deal with Bad Robot, and I, I'm. I think this was kind of a while back. Right. Um, but now they're going to be the ones doing these movies, mm-hmm. which if you remember, um, it wasn't that long ago that like Guillermo del Toro was supposed to be doing justice league dark. <laughs> uh, right, I right, want to yeah. say they've had like three or four. So again, the revolving door of DC, um, directors and producers and whatnot. Uh, but if they've got a production company, at least then that's one step closer to seeing something good come out of one of these properties yeah yeah so i'm kind of down and excited for that mm. hopefully it, it fucking plays out and we can get uh get something good out of it yeah i mean i'm completely down for that it's jj abrams he he has at least a decent track record i wouldn't say he has a great or amazing track record um, um that's he, why I'm, it's not him directing it the, but his production company has a really good track record. Right, they're yeah. pretty fucking awesome with the special effects and practical effects and stuff. Right, so that's why I'm I'm glad he's not. No offense to J.J. Abrams, but as long as it's not, if it's a single movie, fine. If it's supposed to be part of a any type of bigger project, he doesn't know how to close out a project to save his life. So <laughs> right, yeah, I'm I'm okay with Bad Robot mm-hmm. <laughs> being a part of this. Right. I uh, yeah. I mean, and they need help so much over there. They just they need so much oh, so much help. Like I don't know, man. The they need to just hand these projects off to people. They need to do what Marvel's doing: hand these projects off to people who are big in the industry and super fans of the actual stories and stuff, and uh, leave Zack Snyder out of it, and just. Let it go. Unless you're going to bring Zack Snyder on to help do effects or something. Otherwise, just leave him out of this. He can't write a story. He he can't. Well, they need... Yeah, let him direct, but don't have him writing and, you know, fucking coming up with a story or anything like that. Yeah. Uh, Because he can do do some amazing things with, uh, um, like, sequences and, and... special effects like you said mm. and um moments in the movie and whatnot but yeah his story is kind of lackluster uh they need they really need somebody in control like kevin feige to be like okay here's what we're doing yeah here's how this is gonna go yeah they need some direction basically mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. they just don't seem to have yep that's that's how it needs to be all right, guys. I Robot think... struck and killed by self-driving Tesla in Las Vegas at CES. That's the kind of story I want to see. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the robots are turning on each other already. <laughs> hey, as long as they're turning on each other and not us. Exactly. That keeps us... Exactly. Yep. Uh, so I, can, I think we're done now, right? We're done. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed that. But uh, we're going to go ahead and wind down, sign off here. Um, you know, we hope you enjoy our, our rantings and ramblings because none of them make any sense ever. Um, yeah. But, you know, if you if you did enjoy and you want to, like, help in or join in on some of the things that we do, because we like to include people. We like to include our, our community if we're able to, um, you know, join our Discord Visit us on the website on godlygeeks.com. All the links are there. Give us a right, you know, rating on iTunes. Like, share, subscribe. Give us comments. You know, we read them. Tweet at us on Godly Geeks on Twitter. Uh, I I do read the tweets. I respond to people. Sometimes I realize you're being a troll, so I'll troll back, and you don't realize you're being trolled, and that happened before. Um, but 
yeah, you know, if you really want to help out or really like what we're doing, give us a buck on Patreon. We'll throw your name in our credits and uh, mention you on podcasts like we do with Rupert. And for everything else, though, uh, that's it for me. That's it for Luke. You guys have a good day. This is the Ungodly Geeks. I'm Joe. I'm Luke. And you guys have a good day. See y'all later. Fuck yeah.